the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let your kingdom let your will be done. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Let your kingdom. Apostle John was banished on account of the testimony of Christ. Please sit down. And whilst John was in heaven, he had access to many, many truths about the operation of heaven. John was told to write a letter to the seven churches in the then Asia Minor which were a typology of the complete church admonishing them across different lines of the spirit walk then john had access to the throne room where he saw the worship of the father and the worship of the lamb then john had access to the things that will happen thereafter he began to see the end of times and the desolation that would come upon the nations then when we get to chapter 20 john is given the privilege again to go to the throne room and he's watching and john testifies that there are books in heaven and books were opened the book of life was only one of the books this is john's record and we know that his record is true john said he saw that there were books in heaven that those books had many functions and that those books were for earth there were things that happened in the earth that were captured in those books one of those books is what i want to share with you what it represents in the lives of the saints It's called the book of remembrance hmm the book of remembrance memory is a very deep spiritual mystery please look at me memory is an advantage that god gave man it is because of the power of memory that you are able to remember it is because of the power of memory that you are able to preserve knowledge are we together now it will be impossible to advance in science and so on and so forth if you lack memory memory is a system of retention is god's intelligence given to man an ability to retain things because god is not only a giver he's a keeper 
but I know whom I have believed. Follow me tonight. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed. So God has many systems of keeping things. There is a system that keeps the prayers of the saints. The Bible says the prayers of the saints arise like incense and they are collected in a vial and stored. He's able to keep. Hallelujah. And that one of the things that can be kept in heaven is the activities of the saints in the earth. And that there is a book called the book of remembrance. Now, the book of remembrance to a carnal man would suggest that God forgets. The book of remembrance is not necessarily supposed to remind God as though he forgot. No. The book of remembrance is one of the ways that God administers justice in heaven. Please understand this. In the judiciary, some of you who are lawyers and are legal practitioners, you have a very thorough knowledge of the constitution. However, there is a manual, a compendium of all of the policies that should govern the activities of men within a defined territory. And when you are in the law court, I pray that God will open your eyes tonight. When you are in the law court, you not only need your memory, you need the books. The books that archive and represent the basis of your advocacy. The judge himself, before he would pass a declaration, no matter how experienced, he will make reference to the books and consult with the things that are written there. Please listen very carefully. And as he consults with the things that are written there, he would be able to come up with certain verdicts. There are people who look guilty until the book bails them out. There are people who look innocent until the book proves otherwise. And then we see that there is a book of remembrance. The activities of men in the earth, the Bible clearly lets us know that there is the all-seeing eye of God. Now, if you studied fine art, you would have learned something called perspective. Is that true? That means that a viewpoint, you can stand from an angle and they will ask you to capture every information you can find. Paint it, draw it, let it be represented. Are we together now? The same applies for technical drawing and anything that has to do with construction. You are taught to be able to capture realities and images and information from different angles. Now, so when I am here now, I cannot clearly see overflow one. I almost totally cannot see overflow three. I cannot see our online people. And so when we talk about the ability to see, it's difficult for us to understand how God sees. Because we think that God uses his eyes to see. The realm that God dwells in. Listen very carefully. The realm itself is an eye. The Bible says, listen carefully. That God dwells in unapproachable light. That he is full of light and in him there is no darkness. No shadow of turning. No variableness. Are we together now? So that everything that surrounds God everything emanates light and so there is no possibility of darkness i hope you know that darkness also means the absence of information the absence of truth so that from the realm of god it is impossible for any activity to happen within a sphere that is under the jurisdiction of his creation that he cannot see are we together now 
the concept of sight we only know it based on what physics would teach us or medicine and and all of that but you have to look at sight as a product of light if the bible says there is no iota of darkness that means there is no absence of information there is absolutely nothing upon the face of the earth that the all-seeing eye of god the creator cannot see now this is very powerful because there are things that you would wish a man saw so that you would be able to advocate for you for instance the injustice that happens in our world are we together now people can be oppressed and use their earthly influence to manipulate injustice to become justice but the bible records that while all of that is happening in the earth the all-seeing eye of god is there a system of vindication that what men cannot vindicate you on there is still hope are we together now please follow me very carefully so we're discussing books here god sees all things god knows all things god is everywhere this is the unique attribute of god that he did not share with man it is what qualifies God to be in a class of himself. God gave man any other thing. Gave him his image. Gave him dominion. Gave him the Holy Spirit. But God did not give man omnipresence. God did not give man omniscience. God did not give man omnipotence. These exclusive dimensions are reserved in God's class. Man does not know all things man cannot be everywhere are we together now this is very powerful so the bible records that every once in a while god would seem to show up in the earth and then begin to backdate certain things whether for good or for evil that there is a system by which god can go back in time and begin to deal with an issue that you may think has been long forgotten and that there is also a system where god can go back in time and begin to reward the saints for certain things now please understand what i'm telling you then the bible comes to the earth realm and begins to teach that men can forget are we together now scripture is scattered with this possibility that the best of us can forget your memory card can crash is that true your laptop can crash there's something in medicine called brain damage i don't know what it is but i i have an idea that whatever it is it represents a state where your brain for some reason may not coordinate at the frequency it was supposed to there are people who have gone into coma is that true and they came back and could not identify their wives their husbands is that true they didn't even know themselves they didn't know how to walk again how to talk again now i hope you know that if memory is not a possibility you will not be able to walk you will not anything you did now you will not remember again so that memory is an advantage you can archive yesterday and use the information for today i don't have to learn to walk again i learned it once it's been recorded it's been stored anytime i need to walk i use the mystery of remembrance are we together now listen very carefully i don't have to learn alphabets a to z again i did that many years ago but because of this power the ability of retention through memory and the ability to call the past into your present not everything in your past is bad i can call that knowledge and use it today is that true if i raise a song now that you used to sing when you were small it's amazing how effortless you will still sing it remember you did not rehearse but for the power of remembrance But as, as flawless as men are, they still forget. They can forget. I can give you a promise. Come show. 
I can give you a promise. Meet me tomorrow and I'll give you 1,000 Naira and excite you. You may remember, but I may forget. Whether for health reasons, demonic manipulation, or just whatever it is. And you come to me making a demand and I say, no, 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 I cannot remember. And I rob you an opportunity to enjoy this blessing simply because I forgot. There are people who are not employed today because their help has forgot. They forgot where they kept their CVs. Are we together now? There are three stories in the Bible that are very interesting. They are testaments of the mystery of remembrance and how the saints can tap into this as one of the mysteries that cause them to command dominion. And very quickly we are going to look at it. Remember this is a prayer meeting. Story number one. Genesis chapter 41. I'll run through the story very quickly. The Bible tells us that Joseph, when you begin to read from chapter 39, then chapter 40, the Bible lets us know that Joseph now from Potiphar's house on account of an accusation remember what relocated him was an accusation potiphar's wife lied that he raped her and then they relocated him to a dungeon a prison and left him there and then the bible says one morning that joseph watch this joseph noticed the countenance there were many other people in the prison but two were worthy of note the buckler and the wine presser the Bible says they all used to serve the king and for whatsoever reason they annoyed him and he threw them into the dungeon and so they were there with Joseph and then the Bible records that Joseph on seeing them he called for their attention and then they communicated dreams they had heard and Joseph said tell me the dream and I will help you let's see what can happen and then the butler brought his own dream and then the wine presser started first and the interpretation of his dream was in three days the king the pharaoh of egypt will call you out of the dungeon and you will be restored back to the palace where you will serve the butler was impressed at this news and said i also dreamt and he said okay tell me your own dream i was holding three baskets upon my head full of bread he said and suddenly the ravens came and ate of the bread and joseph said oh dear this is what it means in three days you will also go out of here but the only issue is that when you are out of here you will be hung and the birds will eat your flesh so he was done and then he quickly told the wine presser please when you go to pharaoh do not forget remember me tell pharaoh now that you are with me in the prison we don't lie in the prison there's no point lying you are already there prison is where they tell the truth a lie is told so you will not go there but once you are there you see that so at least we've been able to discuss as co-prisoners you know the truth now please go to pharaoh and use the opportunity you have and tell him that there is a man who is who has been unjustly accused and whose destiny has been unjustly tied i can imagine the one presser say no problem god bless you when i go back the first thing i will do is to tell i must make reference to the person who prophesied to me it's amazing how good things can make you forget where you came from and can make you forget that you need to help others too this is man for you are we together now i i can imagine them hugging themselves loving themselves blessing themselves and saying look i'm not sure you'll stay more than one week in this prison again now that i'm out by evening just imagine in the prison that we're discussing your issue and joseph will say thank you but the bible i love the bible the bible says that when he was reinstated it noted that the man forgot joseph Joseph remained in the prison for two years because one man's memory went bad. Please understand the implication of this. Not because his skill went down. 
not because God was no longer with him. The memory of his helper could no longer capture the need to help him. And the man was there, full of grace, full of gifts, full of potentials, full of prophecy, full of dreams, but at the mercy of one man's memory. Are we together now? Then the Bible says, when God was now ready to remember by himself, Genesis 41, let's start from there. I've saved the long reading of chapter 39 and 40. Genesis 41. Let's start from verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of what? Two full years. Take note of that information. Two full years. That Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by a river. Verse 2. And behold, there came up out of this this and that and that jump to verse 9 let's save time verse 9 now remember let me just save us the stress he gathered everybody the sorcerers and everyone and said i have dreamed a dream that has troubled me the pharaoh speaking now and he attempted to get those who would interpret for him and they could not interpret and then the bible says verse 9 then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember i do remember my faults this day next verse pharaoh was wrought with his servants and put me in word in the captain of the guard's house both me and the chief baker and we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. And we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. Read on. And there was with us a young man. Was he not supposed to say this earlier? But because he could not remember, two full years were added to a man's experience. And now by the mercy of God, look how effortless he's remembering everything. That means the information was still in his memory. Something stopped it from coming to light. Follow me, please. It does not look like this man forgot the story. So why could he not remember? Look how articulate he is in stating everything. Remember, his brother was now two years old in the grave. He had died. And he still remembered everything. He says, there was this young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream did he interpret. 3, 13. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me, he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. 14. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The power of remembrance. Then, only after remembrance, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily. Hastily. That means speed was a possibility in his life. But just because the memory of the benevolence, what he did, could not be remembered, this man remained in the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Now, when you begin to read the remaining parts, after interpreting the dream, at that moment, Joseph is reinstated. And not only reinstated, promoted to get to a point where he became the prime minister of Egypt. And Pharaoh made a declaration that only in the throne would joseph be lower than him now remember that everything in scripture is a type of christ and the church are we together number two everything in scripture is prophecy the bible says the things that were written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope are we together now yes so joseph is put on that throne and then they bring him an egyptian wife are we together now 
the daughter of Potiphar, the Bible says, the priest of On. And she became his wife. And they too became the rulers of Egypt. And under their leadership, Egypt began to thrive and excel even in the times of famine. Now notice, everyone who came to buy grain to survive only did that because one man remembered. Look at the miracles that were associated with remembrance. The reinstating of a man, the fulfillment of a prophecy, the saving of a nation and the then world from famine for seven years were at the mercy of one man's memory. Everybody say the book of remembrance. If one man's memory can produce that kind of boomerang effect, one man just remembering and the king fetches him from a dungeon and he becomes a representation of God's purposes within his day then it means there is something we need to know about the power of remembrance number two in Isaiah chapter 38 please give it to us verse 1 the Bible talks about a man called Hezekiah are we together now in those days verse 1 please look up Hezekiah was sick unto death. Everybody say unto death. That means that something was about to end in his life. And the Bible says, Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said, Thus saith the Lord. Now when God is speaking, and, and I hope you know that Isaiah was not a fake prophet. Isaiah was a genuine prophet. Thus saith the Lord set your house in order for thou shalt die and not live who is speaking god is speaking through a mouthpiece called isaiah and saying hezekiah i hate to be the bearer of bad news but you are not going to recover you will die and hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the lord let's see the contents of hezekiah's prayer ready and he said, everybody, remember now. Remember when? I remember my wrong this day. That's what the butler said. Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee. How I have walked before you. Go to the archives and check. God of heaven, I know there is a verdict upon me now. But I place a demand on the mystery of remembrance. Remember that you are a just God righteousness and justice at the foundations and I have become a lawyer at the point of death I need to plead a case and I'm using the remembrance it says I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and I have done that which is good in your sight is it not written that if they obey and serve me they will spend their years in prosperity is that true now Isaiah is bringing before God. He's saying, Lord, I know you are God, but something is wrong with this verdict. I know that you can remember there are archives, testaments of my uprightness before you. And I bring it before you. And I plead, although you are God, remember. Next verse. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah again. So the Bible is showing us how God remembers. Now watch this. He's praying. Remember the content of his prayer. Remember. The Bible is showing us how God remembers. That when God remembers a thing or a person, this is how he acts. Verse 4 again, please. Let's go back to verse 4 so that we we'll understand what we are doing. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, next verse. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard your prayer of remembrance. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add to thy days 15 years. Verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And then you will read on, he used the sun as a sign to go back 15 degrees. So that he would know the certainty of the things that were spoken everybody say remembrance if you knew isaiah and isaiah died you say oh dear i mean hezekiah hezekiah you have gone 
but hezekiah refused to die and hezekiah used remembrance to insist that oh god remember i have walked uprightly before you and the bible says god remembered he turned his situation around the last story is a prayer meeting <laughs> story story once upon a time there was a king called Ahasuerus and that king the Bible records that he was Lord over 127 provinces then the Bible lets us know that he was married to a woman called Vashti and that the king would usually, as they did in those days, flaunt their glory, including their wives. Are we together? And it was time to bring Vashti to the scene and Vashti refused. And I hope you know that what Vashti did was not really, it was an offense, but it was not that bad. It was because she was in a position that she had the power to influence other women. If the king, Ahasuerus, was not a king, an ordinary man, the suggestion would be counseling. Counsel them and say, that's all right. You are not the first. Just make sure you don't act like a stupid woman tomorrow. But because she was in a position, the king was such a nice man, he didn't want to act. But his advisors came and said, no, 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 no. These people are models that means not every offense carries the same gravity at every level you will do tomorrow what you did today and the consequence may be more are you seeing that now and then the bible says Vashti is banished then the scene changes and the king calls for young virgins to come all within the province and then the bible says in Shushan there was a little village girl called Hadassah. Are we together? Yes. The, she was the niece of Mordecai, one who sat at the gate. Now, please follow my story. Then the Bible says, a time came when certain people were conniving to dethrone Ahasuerus. And Mordecai heard that information and he took it to the king and told the king that this and that such and such is to happen and they apprehended the people and justice was administered then the bible says it was recorded and left are we together now yes so cut the long story short esther becomes queen but in that same palace the right hand man of the king who was a friend to vashti obviously are we together now by the name Haman the Bible says that this man was antagonistic to the purposes of God he hated the Jews I believe had they left Haman for long enough one day he would have implicated Esther herself because his plan the Bible says was to annihilate the Jews one by one he would first focus on the ones outside the palace and then deal with the ones within the palace so her man was making life very difficult are we together now and then every other thing that happens is the hand of god and how he delivers people but now let's go very quickly to esther chapter 6. on that night look up please on that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king i hope you know that the book of esther again is a type of our relationship with the christ esther being his bride the church mordecai being the holy spirit are we together now her man being satan the accuser of the brethren who once had access to the throne who was now banished are you getting the point now esther being queen king ahasuerus being the father now understand all of these stories the bible says that on that night could not the king sleep 
was it not in your bible that you should give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem are we together now so the bible says that they were read before the king next verse and it was found written that mordecai had told of bitana and teresh two of the king's chamberlains the keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on king ahasuerus verse 3 and the king said what honor and dignity hath been done not will be done that means under normal circumstances this man should not be in this situation after communicating that level of benevolence what had been done to this man mordecai for this then said the king's servants that ministered unto him there is nothing done for him there is nothing done for him the company runs by your intelligence but there is nothing done for him the lives and the destiny saved through your love for god but nothing done for him next verse and the king said who is in the court now her man was coming to the king the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang mordecai look at this 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 wicked luciferian type of attitude that means if the book of remembrance were not open for three more days mordecai would have died remember it coincided with when you wanted to get the permission to finally finish him ah it's good to be remembered on time it's good to be remembered on time now here is a man i'm sure the man had discussed with his wife we will hang that man today but that same time quarter to shame may god arise for someone in the name of jesus christ just when the desire of the wicked seems to find expression by the intelligence of god and by the mystery of remembrance may god raise help in the name of jesus christ follow my story her man was in the outward court of the king's house to speak to the king to hang mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him the guy had dug the gallows i'm sure in his mind he had imagined how mordecai would die rejoice not over me my enemies god can remember next verse and the king's servant said unto him behold her man standeth in the court and the king said let him come in let's read on look up please so her man came in and the king said unto him what shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor when god is ready to lift you now notice when he was talking to the chamberlains he said what shall be done to mordecai but when her man now came if he said what should be done to mordecai he said uh -uh. what will be done to the man whom the king honored i hope you know this same mystery was used to conceal jesus when the pharisees came and said are you the christ who are you john said i am the voice of one crying that means i will not tell you i'm elijah that will forerun the coming of the lord are we together now jesus christ that concealing continued to happen until the father finally declared this is my beloved son so now mordecai is hidden as the man who the king wants to honor now her man thought in his heart watch this to whom will the king delight to honor more than to myself so his selfishness was about to propose a fantastic idea to his peril he makes diviners mad that god can turn their reasoning backward so that they will not perform their enterprise and her man answered the king for the man whom the king delighted to honor comma let the royal apparel be brought before the king before which the king used it to wear 
That means her man had even been eyeing Lazarus himself. Are you seeing it now? You are told to honor a man and you say king you have many robes there's one that you wear let it be done to that man when you start wearing the king's clothes you are shifting closer to the throne <laughs> my god and the horse that the king rided upon does that sound like satan to you i will be like the most high i will arise above the stars of god the same spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. It says, And the crown royal which is set upon his head. Verse 9. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of, of one of the king's most noble princes. That they array the man withal whom the king delighted to honor. Listen. And bring him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor full stop what a wicked man because he thought about himself and listen that opportunity only allowed his lost and imagination everything he had imagined to happen by all means now he had the chance and he said king this is what should be done to that man next verse hallelujah ah. then the king said to her man make haste and take the apparel and the horse that thou hast said and do even so to joshua selman There is a strong anointing on what I share with you. That seated at the king's gate, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Nothing. Next verse. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him before the horseback through the street of the city. And Haman was dragging Mordecai. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Next verse. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate now notice this let me explain to you what this means look up after all that clamor when Mordecai was done he returned back to the gate and sat there will you climb the king's horse with his apparel and not go to the throne and sit down Mordecai said I will stay where I was lifted there was a place I stayed even though I am rising I will not forget that it was my service at the gate that caused remembrance to come. Can you wear the king's robe, ride the king's horse, and still remain where the king kept you? The king had not promoted him. The king gave an instruction. I'm sure while Mordecai was on that horse, he was saying, don't be carried away. You are not yet in the palace you will go there but you are not yet there and he came down imagine the entire crowd say Mordecai I'm sure you are the assistant now and he says watch me let me return back to the place from whence that grace found me I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of Lord. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord 
of lords your glorious majesty someone be Mordecai tonight hey Listen, this right here is how great men fall. When they are tested with power, when they are tested with lifting, when they are tested with the anointing, when God begins to lift you and sudden lifting come overnight, chances are that you will forget. Deuteronomy chapter 8, don't turn there. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses, when you have done all these things, you will say, my power and my might has gotten this. He said, but thou shall remember. Listen, it's not only God alone that has a book of remembrance. Men must have books of remembrance. When David stood before Goliath, he said, the God who delivered me I remember what happened. The God who delivered me from the bear, delivered me from the lion today. He would deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Forget not. Forget not that he took you from nothing. Forget not that there were 10 of you in your family and you are the first to rise now. Forget not that it was, you, you started rising before you knew anything about favor. Forget not. Let's just stay here and let me teach you something very powerful, my brothers and my sisters. A man who can remember is a man who can be sustained a man who can remember the faithfulness of God remember where you were yesterday remember the hand that lifted you that is the man that will never go down pastors forget businessmen forget years ago I remember I watched a Nigerian film of a village girl who was loved by a wealthy man i don't know the name of the film i don't even know who acted it are we together now and he picked this village girl i think she was selling something granite or so, you know the way they do nigerian films and he saw her and liked her and picked her his parents insulted him he said kill me i would marry this village girl and then like 11 years or so down the line she had become the wife of this man and there was another village girl who was a house help in that house and this once village girl ill treated this woman ill treated the young girl until one time i think she got blind or paralyzed or something and when she was paralyzed it was the small girl that stayed with her in the hospital and then a pastor came to pray for her for uh, uh, healing or something and then she began to remember that all of this and that and that then the long and short of the nigerian film is that she later discovered that that girl was her sister the little girl i think the, maybe the mother had the child somewhere also that was a sister that she was ill-treating let me tell you this the bliss of the palace made the butler to forget the bliss of greatness the applause of men you know most people sit down and say what is there in fame what? no 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 there is a reason why remembrance is necessary you want sustainable anointing you want sustainable impact please learn to remember 
you need to have a book of remembrance that is in the similitude of that which is on the throne i remember that 10 years ago when i was nothing this gentleman came i remember when i was soaking gary for instance you will say i remember so that you don't see him 10 years later and push him no there are mistakes you make when you are outside of the palace it does not matter if you make those mistakes in the palace you will pay for it first she could make any mistake outside the palace and go scot free but now this mistake on the throne would cost her so much thou shall remember the lord thy god thou shall remember many have forgotten their fathers many have forgotten their mothers many have forgotten those who played all kinds of roles in their lives many have forgotten the god that lifted them many have forgotten the hand that helped them please listen to what i'm telling you god is speaking to someone here that a man can rise so high that the scar of yesterday's pain can so erode from your life and your mind it will never look like you were there it will never look like you ever climbed a bike in your life it will it will never look like you soaked gary i know sometimes we are excellent people but sometimes we allow the deception of success to so swallow us that we lose the ability to forget i have learned as a personal principle that modesty is the closest way to remember when you live a life that is modest temperate the bible calls it that he that strives for mastery is temperate that means define boundaries it was a mistake solomon made he refused to be temperate by the time we get to ecclesiastes solomon was a man who was utterly lawless and careless see let me tell you this i believe in prosperity i believe in all the blessings of god but look at me believers there is only so much cloth you can wear there is only so much food you can eat are we together now this is all the stomach you have another one will not come from anywhere thank god for all the cars you will have you will not remove one leg and put it in one jeep and remove your head and put it in another car the way we approach success if not guided by these mysteries many people will fall by the wayside this is why you find out uh, respectfully speaking this is true for men of god is true for business people is true for politicians they begin to rise and when the whole world is watching suddenly they vanish out of thin air the mistake of haman and the wisdom of mordecai are two lessons we must learn Mordecai rides on a horse the king's horse that honor is an honor that I don't think even the queen had and when Mordecai dropped he said thank you Haman he returned back to the king's gate that's where they found him was it not on your knees the anointing found you have you returned back <laughs> was it not in the place of fasting and prayer that grace met you was it not in the place of dedication where you will roll like this my dear brother that was rolling left and right i'm sure for some of you that was so embarrassing this guy is falling his hand so our a deceptive approach to life tells us listen if you were lifted on your knees remain on your knees if you were lifted while singing his praise remain singing his praise it's very uncomfortable to remain on your knees when the world is watching you it's embarrassing you are not that naive you should stand so you can shine apostle joshua selman the man of god anointed but when you remember that if god forgets you anything can happen to you when god forgets you anything can happen it's a lesson we're still going to move on but i need you to get this listen i have shared this for years 
and told people be careful i have warned many people in my life and said if if you don't pay attention with the way you are managing success you will fall by the wayside it was not prophecy some of them thought it was nonsense nonsense and today sadly speaking many of them have gone down as if it was not god that lifted them do you know the higher you rise the more slippery the path is a day can come when you will even be ashamed to roll before god why will i roll my designers on the ground in the presence of kings and in the presence of nobles this was the mistake that saul's daughter made that made her remain barren when david it was time to take the ark david danced and danced and rejoiced like a fool and the daughter of saul said king you are no longer a shepherd you are carrying a stupid bush mindset you want to embarrass yourself you are no longer a, you are a king act like royalty and he said i'm dancing before god who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me and the bible says god had that conversation when god had that conversation no matter what would have happened she wouldn't have given birth because an indignation rose i continue to tell god i say lord i remain your boy oh huh i am other people's father i am other people's mentor i am other people's role model thank god for that but i remain your boy you will always meet me where you found me adam where are you i heard thy voice but i hid it because i was naked he said her man let's continue sit please her man hasted to his house mourning crying and having his head covered next verse and her man told zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him and said his wise men and zeret listen then said his wise men and zeresh his wife unto him if mordecai be the seed of the jews before whom thou hast begun to fall thou shall not prevail against him but shall surely fall before him that means this mistake you have made mordecai is the seed of the jews there are commandments that have been given the jews to not forget if mordecai is a true jew and will remember those ordinances you are finished because the factors that should make him fall and give way will not happen again your doom is true look at this mordecai once at the gate now I, I want to save us time because you read later on you find out that her man was hung at the gallows all kinds of things began to happen in his life culminated by esther's declaring to the king that this man wanted to destroy her people and the king went to his garden to think like any wise leader would do to not be hasty in speech and then he came and knelt down and was begging her and when the king came it looked like he was trying to rape the wife and the king said not only have you annoyed me you are now trying to rape my wife go and hang this guy the gallows was there waiting for them and they hung him there and that was the end of it and then eventually mordecai was honored to take the place of haman in the palace and that ends the story of esther listen carefully there are two women only in scripture whose names became the books of the bible and their names were written there so that we will remember what they did the two names ruth and esther were put in the bible the two women did the same thing notice that in all cases it had to do with men it had to do with marriage and it had to do with the power of submission the power of loyalty the power of not trivializing the things that god can do and the remembrance that follows 
Ruth remembered her mother-in-law and said, I'm not leaving you. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. And because she stayed and remembered how this woman was nice to her as a mother-in-law, she led her and advised her to a field of a wealthy man called Boaz. Are we together now? Yes. And Boaz saw her and loved her and took her. I hope it is very interesting because for Esther, she had never married. But for Ruth, she lost her husband. And now an opportunity was coming again. Remembrance. The book of remembrance that archives the works of the saints. And that there is a reward system attached to it. And that once you can invoke the mystery that will make God remember. Now take note. He is not remembering because he's forgotten. He's remembering because it is part of the ordinances of heaven for administering justice. Remembrance. Let me show you a scripture I found that really, really changed my life. And then I'll give you two keys and we'll pray. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14. Please read with me. Everyone is projected if you can see. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14. One to read. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this. Stop, 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 stop. That means you can take any matter to God and provoke remembrance concerning this. You can put your this there concerning my finances, concerning my family situation, concerning my joblessness, concerning the tragedy happening. You can go before God and say, remember me. Oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. When the Lord showed me this scripture, I remember crying like a baby. I said, This is powerful. Lord, do not wipe these good deeds. With all humility, you can go before God. Lord, I have served. Lord, I am a faithful worker. I stand before God. It is true that I clean the seats. Lord, I stand before you that you can go concerning this. This is how to petition the parliament of heaven. Remember concerning this. And all that I have done, do not wipe it out for the house of the Lord and for the offices thereof. So God remembers. And every time God remembers, God acts. Please look at me. My dad is such an amazing man. Quite a very, very amazing man. One thing I learned from my dad that I thank God for, he's still alive. I truly thank God for, is that my dad was an extremely grateful man my dad paid attention i saw this growing up if you did something striking my dad would make a big deal out of it and will continue to raise a memorial over that act one time they were traveling to the village and it was in the night i don't know what took them there it was really late and the car broke down i think it was raining and there was they asked around and there was a mechanic now they were more than halfway the journey almost in the middle of nowhere and the mechanic was brought and he had to look at the car and the mechanic not only looked at the car i think i hope i'm right he followed them right to the village so that if anything happened he would be there do you know from that time until i left home every time my dad were traveling he would buy potato or buy something and stop at that house and say where is this man this was even it was it was more than 10 years down the line he was still doing it remembrance remembrance there are people today who are not supposed to be sitting with kings but are sitting because the kings remember their fathers 
remember their mothers you said you are the son of who that man let me tell you a little story in 1961 i was a young boy from the village with a torn trouser when your father gave me a cup of water the cup of water that was what 10 naira is now what a great destiny because of remembrance when god remembers you you are lifted when men remember you you are lifted you need the book of remembrance to be open Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left you away? Thank you, Jesus. Do you know let me tell you in my personal work with god there are things that god has done in my life even to this day he continues to do them and most times when i go before him to say thank you he will remind me of a particular kingdom not necessarily a sacrifice he will tell me that this that happened do you know there are families before i finish my story there are families that will never go down do you know why because they didn't have all the money but they left a little room for missionaries they left a little space and every man of god will come you would think the people are in ministry their job is to cook and you would think those things will be forgotten but there is a book in the heavenlies where these things are recorded and you will see the child will come many years later sometimes the child may not even be serious with god but for that covenant of remembrance god will come and visit the children remembrance i once watched the documentary of fiji island the revival that happened in fiji island and it was said that the missionaries the early missionaries who got there that the people oppressed them and killed them or butchered them or did something very tragic and then they died the moment they died is a documentary i think you can find it somewhere the fish in the sea stopped producing fish the land stopped producing at its maximum it wasn't even producing the nation literally plunged to depression until some intercessors began to pray they began to pray and to pray and to pray and then the lord revealed to them that there is an indignation that is rising over that territory and that they needed to plead the blood it would take the blood of the eternal covenant to solve this problem and then they had time to pray repent on behalf of the nation and then in addition fortunately they found the grandchildren of the missionaries that they had killed the grandchildren and they invited them to fiji island and they performed a ceremony officially apologizing loving them and they prayed and blessed the land just like child's play within a short time i don't know what time frame exactly strangely they saw fish in the sea and species of fish that they had not seen the first crusade that we had as a ministry the first crusade it was in plateau state i remember one of the the people who was guiding us the tour guide he took us to the graves of the missionaries and showed us the missionaries that were killed when they brought the gospel to that land and showed us the missionaries and showed us everything and that from that time that they killed the people all kinds of things had been happening in the land and i remember standing there to pray and we said lord the lord is gracious and compassionate the bible says he's slow to anger and rich in love we stood there and said we are also missionaries and in the name of jesus christ we stand by the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of any abel there and to speak and say in the name of jesus that the land be released i tell the truth and i lie not we were somewhere standing and we were watching a hill and all of a sudden physical dark shadow like everybody you could record it we just began to see it slowly moving out of the land it took almost 45 minutes so it was not something you would rush like that just moving corporately out of the land we 
where I schooled, secondary school, there used to be a tree. The tree, I'm not exaggerating, the tree was dried, but all the leaves were on it. They tied ropes around the tree. And you would ask and they would tell you there was a story that the tree was cursed. There was a story that happened around there. Cursed as a memorial over the land. Why would God tell the nation of Israel, raise a memorial in this place and teach your children? That means they should not forget. If they ask you, why do you do this? Teach them that this is why we do this. So that you will know. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Keep it, keep it. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart. Depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Then he says, they are alive to those who find them and health to their flesh. As a man, I've had people in my life who I almost cannot reject helping and lifting because they, the, the power of remembrance, they will always remember and make reference and say, Apostle, thank you. You did so, 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 and so to me. You did so, 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 and so to my family. And they remind me of God. And I'm compelled every time, even when they don't ask me anything, it's like their remembrance of that is, is a debt that, that I must pay. I am moved to wanting to help them again. Many have forgotten. Like Haman. I want to employ the wisdom of Mordecai. That you never forget where he brought you from. Are we together? That there is remembrance. Now let me teach you before we pray very quickly. Two keys. Two keys that open the book of remembrance over a man. There are two scriptures that will reveal these keys. And then we'll pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. This is the first key that you will need. To open the book of remembrance over yourself. Over your family. Over your territory. Let's read together. One, two, go. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Uh-huh. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Watch this. The first key that opens the book of remembrance is consistency of your well-doing. Regardless of reward regardless of who sees you regardless of whatever commendation comes or does not come consistency weariness is something that can catch up with you when your value is not being appreciated when your impute is not being noticed are we together now we're humans and if you continue to strive to contribute in the life of a man a ministry an organization a system and it looks like you are not noticed and you are not rewarded the side effect is weariness and the bible says let us not be weary that means that your reward is tied to your consistency this country is full of stories of people who deserve to be rewarded politically spiritually are we together financially in business in ministry but for many years they had all kinds of hamans around their lives around their offices yet the people continue to be steadfast many of our loved ones have situations where they were qualified to be the ones sitting at certain positions but manipulations happened and yet they continued being consistent the bible says if you are consistent if you are steadfast if you are unbending in well-doing the bible gives you a guarantee that a season according to the law of times and seasons the law of time and chance because it happened to them all the bible says one day like the hand of a clock it must come to your turn and you must find expression this is true this is true
I met a precious lady yesterday one one dear lady I used to know her that should be 2004 2005 in the campus here she used to sing in one of the fellowships wonderful lady she would sing her heart out dance and celebrate God everyone wanted to attend the fellowship just because I mean the lady would lead worship with all she was always smiling always happy and then I had the opportunity to see her yesterday and I saw her she was happy now a mother of many children and I looked at her and then she brought me her album and said apostle I remember those days and I said oh dear who told you God does not remember who told you God forgets the sacrifices of the saints there are things you are doing today you are already securing tomorrow with it a day will come you will watch the video of this level of koinonia and tears will come out of your eyes you say that was me cleaning the chairs that was me playing the keyboard and someone stands to say you are not supposed to be where you are and God says it's too late your consistency imagine if Mordecai got tired and said look I'm tired of bailing the king out and then her man would be receiving the glory Mordecai was consistent even when he rode upon the king's back he returned to stay where he was found everybody say consistency listen this is an encouragement to someone right now the worship team got it powerfully what's that song again you are not turning back where's Tosin? not turning back and not going just sing that part for me I'm gonna wait on you Jesus 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 yeah, that's the song I'm gonna wait I'm back now I'm not turning back now I'm not turning back now I'm not turning back now One more time I'm gonna wait on you Jesus 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 And I'm not turning back now 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 Listen, let me teach you something Impatience will always give birth to what will fight your promise You must sustain the stamina to stay Let God meet you where he last instructed you Lord, I will continue another woman who showed us the power of waiting was Anna the prophetess the Bible says for about 60 years from the time she lost her husband listen carefully for about 60 years she was in the temple do you know what it means to pray without results for 60 years Abraham did it for 25 years hey my soul wait thou upon the Lord there is power in waiting there is power in staying there is power in remaining I keep sowing I don't see the heavens open but I will continue sowing I keep speaking I may not see the result but I will never stop speaking I will keep serving I may not see the result but I will keep serving I will hold on to the word men may mock me they may call you stupid you are wasting your time where is the consolation when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and they testified among the hidden that the Lord had done great things for us it says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. The Bible says, they that sow in tears. Listen, Koinonia, it is possible to sow in tears. And the Bible says, in due season, John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Hear me? 
listen to me you must conquer the pressure that men will bring to you they will push you into seasons that are not yet god's design they will push you into things that are not yet god's design mordecai can you remain in the palace can you stay at the gates mordecai looked at haman and knew that haman was occupying his position but the battle is the lord's he remained at the gate if haman tried to fight mordecai mordecai would kill him because mordecai haman was the king's friend can i tell you this my brothers and my sisters it will not always look like this let me speak to you it will not always be that you will go home every night and wonder what do i eat no no the bible says why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen man of god it will not always be that you go to a meeting and the power of god will not be there no you you are in a season stay stay i'm prophesying to you you are in a season build stamina and stay a day will come when the glory of god will mantle you stay while you learn jesus you are savior not at its 12 you are savior not at age 18 jesus you are savior not at 30 you are only savior at 33. the 18 year old jesus would not save the world joseph you are a deliverer but not in the pit please listen to what i teach you tonight these are secrets of the kingdom my soul wait so the first key that causes the book of remembrance to be open the book of remembrance in heaven and the book of remembrance before men is consistency keep praying you look like a fool but keep praying bros you are still here five years you are not making progress your colleagues have started ministry stay there stay there stay there stay there while you pray listen let me tell you one of the most powerful virtues of the spirit is self-control many of the gifts of the spirit are tied to it why should i keep quiet when i can prophesy why should i not talk when i can preach there are people in this ministry that I love so much, scattered in and around. They are mighty men in the spirit, in ministry. Some of them are mighty business people in this ministry. Multi-millionaires. You will never see any pressure to be known, any pressure to be seen. They come and sit down, they serve God, they worship God, yet they are mighty prophets. They are mighty apostles. Let me tell you something. When you see a man that has self-control, respect such a man. It is powerful to have what to say and keep quiet. It is powerful to know what to do and still remain. It is powerful to see a door that is open and yet not move. If the door is closed, it's not a proof of your stamina. The door is closed. But can you stand before an open door and yet not move? hallelujah this is very powerful i've had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people in my life and sometimes when people want to tell me who and who i'm going to meet they'll say ah, apostle this man is a great man or maybe he's an influential man politically or he's a great man financially or spiritually and apostle ah, these people have this and that and i stand before the lord god of heaven and i lie not I have never been under pressure to tell anybody sorry sir can you help me and buy a recharge card uh, I, there is a ministry called koinonia if the ministry is blessing you can you send 10 naira no no consistency god is ministering to someone now because you see let me tell you this there are many of you that coming to koinonia is even an embarrassment to you because by the time you come they look at you and say for five years no car no nothing the only thing you do is to pray like a fool 
the only thing you do is to loiter around and sometimes you can feel stupid for being consistent i give you a scripture you are already opening a door stay there till the door opens you see the thing about god is that five minutes to your lifting it will still not be like it five minutes to your rising joseph you are still in the prison while the person has left the palace and is coming to you already you are not seeing him oh israel when god is already winning the battle you don't have to fight but you are not seeing just believe in what jehoshaphat is saying hallelujah consistency i will pray as before i will fast as before i will worship as before listen never be ashamed of your today you will miss it tomorrow receive the grace and the stamina to stay let people laugh at you let people mock you especially for our dear ladies because society has all kinds of pressures on ladies show us your husband is he a rich man show us this show us that have you traveled to um, um um asia america london uk and you stand there feeling stupid for loving the lord let us not be weary in well-doing there are preachers that need to stay lord what should i do now should i start a church or should i stay and god says just keep doing what you are doing in due season we shall reap can i tell you this the season of reward for a man's life is a fearful dimension of that man's life for reasons you cannot tell and explain you will see that god will command the territory to begin to sing your songs and to speak your purposes david was going to be king but for a very long time he was in the wilderness he killed a lion but remained in the wilderness he killed a bear if that news got to Saul, they would have called him to serve in the palace, but he would never be king. Sometimes don't be quick to announce your achievements. Let God and time reveal it. Just come, kill the bear, but remain quiet in the wilderness. This itch to talk sometimes is proof of weakness. You sabotage where you are going. Did the Bible not already tell you that you cannot light a lamp and hide it under a bushel? waiting is very hard it's proof of spiritual maturity to wait until seasons come hallelujah i've shared with you my story for many years in this ministry god would not allow me buy a car even when koinonia was on crowds of people here i would climb a bike and come for koinonia you would think i were a stupid person it was not lack of finances just like that lord why do you want to humiliate me i love you so much why won't you leave me to buy a car then people started bringing cars to give me and god would tell me to just bless them and let them go if i were your relative would you clap for me for that kind of brain you would just be careful what you call common sense it has destroyed many people the way of the spirit is very strange I will never forget one time a man came to sit in front of me and said this is what god gave him he was going to bring me car keys and he carried the keys of the car and i was already smiling when he came again mm -mm. he said this man has not discussed with his wife his wife would join the people who would talk about you and say you have manipulated the husband i appreciated the man prayed for him with all my heart and told him to carry the car and go you see that Will I ever have a need of a car today? No. Never, ever, forever. Listen, waiting pays. When God wants to pay you, He will backdate it. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. Feel it till it runs over. sustain the stamina to wait shut your mouth and your ears against the things that people say and all the rubbish and the nonsense that you will hear people say you are on your way to a dimension of grace he's training you he's teaching you listen you can stay with god 
you are lifting people out of the wheelchair and God will tell you not to honor one invitation sit down Lord as what be a brother in welfare not even prayer band not even any place Lord at least let me go to prayer department it says welfare is where I need you but Lord are you aware I'm a prophet and you, I will be a prophet to the nations he will say cook let me teach you how to feed men and you are there turning food and somebody says do you ever have the ambition of being a chef and you almost want to want to slap the person and say are you do i look like a chef and god says turn it i teach you how to overturn and you carry that cooler on your head and you are marching and somebody says, ah, emoji was it not you that was in our house yesterday he said this you mean i thought you were a pastor say no i work in the welfare department what kind of church is this is it that they don't see men of god in this church and you feel stupid you drop that cool and say no god this this lady i she 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 saw me prophesy and god says carry that cooler because it is while you are carrying that cooler you are qualifying yourself a day will come you will be able to carry any luggage and not be ashamed because you learned how to carry something embarrassing hallelujah i always tell people jokingly i didn't start ministry preaching let me tell you you've heard my story i started ministry playing keyboard for a reverend who were part of the, the it was a prison ministry they were part of the people who preached later on to general obas and joe when he was in prison they used to allow the mission agencies to go and preach they preached to him i used to play keyboard for them i had my local church and then later on he started a church when he started a church it was quite a distance from where i would live i would carry my own keyboard by myself this was 93 94 i would carry keyboard by myself and trek to the international hotel where he was using and drop it there I will play that keyboard they will finish share the grace I will carry it and trek back with joy the only thing I ever got throughout my time of serving in that ministry was one cassette and one bottle of Fanta when they were dedicating his album I would have been offended and I would have been angry and say you don't know who I am the proof of sonship is servanthood if you can serve you are a son indeed let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus though he is God he considered it not robbery he came and humbled himself died even the death on the cross wherefore on the strength of that do you know that Jesus was almost giving up at Gethsemane as a man if it's possible let this cup pass over me I said nevertheless not my will but yours be done so this is the first key someone say I will continue better is the end of a thing the Bible says than the beginning thereof it is not enough to start you must trust God for grace and listen my brothers and my sisters I admit to you that it is painful your humanity will catch up with you while you wait yes as a gentleman they will look at you and say i used to know you in 2000 you mean you are still here how much is this shoe you are buying which church did you say you are serving? Say, now i've been promoted i'm a deacon he said deacon deacon indeed your useless life looking like your yesterday you have not changed and you stand there feeling stupid for serving god and god says continue i almost gave up Sam felt like I just couldn't take light anymore this is an encouragement for someone my, my problems held me bound depression weighed me down but God kept me so I wouldn't let go God's mercy kept me so I won't let go.
God can keep. He can give strength to the faint. Whatever you have to do, keep moving. Even if you cry, cry, but keep moving. Even if you feel discouraged, keep moving. Insist that I will never stop. If God has not stopped on me, then I will not stop on myself. I know he's called me to be a worshiper to the nations. My first song, they forgot it in two days. You may be saying. Some of you put your songs online. After three months, only two people liked it. No problem. Just continue. Some of you put your sermons online. And you had only four comments and all of them were criticizing you. Go back to Bible school. Someone wrote nonsense. Another person said, look, false prophet. And he just said, I will never go online again. I will never preach this thing again. No. Reinhard Bonke said the first time, he used to escort a man for crusade. And that day the man told him, God said he would not come back again. Reinhard Bonke would be the person to preach. And Reinhard Bonke said he was shaking. He was saying, Lord, is this how you have chosen to embarrass me? And he stood and began to preach. And he began to minister to the sick. And people started shouting, blind eyes, I can see. Deaf ears, I can hear. People were rising out of wheelchair. Please continue. Receive the grace to continue. Receive the grace to keep praying. Receive the grace to keep speaking. Yeah. Hallelujah. Someone can come to your family and say, Kai, this is your family. You will never change. You people are just like this. Keep declaring. With my eyes will I see the salvation of the Lord. Surely there is an end. My tomorrow is better than my today. I will one day be called Beulah and Hephzibah. I am the planting of the Lord. A well watered garden thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through water and through fire but thou brought us into a wealthy place the Lord is my light and salvation of whom shall I be afraid he won't stop he won't stop till my life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop Till I look just like you, I won't stop, I won't stop, till I look just like him. I won't stop, I won't stop, till I look just like him. Please sit down. Key number two, and then we'll pray. The first key that can cause remembrance towards you before God and before men is to not be weary in well-doing continue rewarded or not continue commended or not continue understood or not continue number two Isaiah 43 verse 26 thank you Jesus Isaiah 43 and verse 26 want to read koinonia put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou that thou mayest be justified god is speaking put me lift up a cry from the earth to heaven and say lord remember put me in remembrance put me in remembrance are you ready for one powerful scripture you should add to your library if there are five scriptures in your library let this be there ah i found this scripture day before yesterday i was meditating it fired like an arrow from my head to my feet i blasted in tongues i said that's right you see the bible said the kingdom of god is like a man who lost his treasure and you find candle and broom you sweep it when you find that you rejoice numbers chapter 10 verse 9 numbers 10 verse 9 look up koinonia and read it with faith in your heart ready one to read and if ye go to war in your land 
against the enemy that oppress you then shall ye blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God and ye shall be saved from your enemy I now know what they did in before Jericho that when you stand and your enemies overwhelm you lift up the trumpet is the power of praise oh, shall he scabber with us lift up that trumpet the word is yada praise lifted with understanding that when you see that you are encompassed by enemies and there is no way for victory when you pray in addition to that prayer put God in remembrance then don't disturb him again lift up your trumpet and begin to blast it like the priest that you are go around your Jericho while you blast the trumpet go around your Jericho while you blast the trumpet and the Bible says that sound that shofar will come before God as a memorial this is scripture see let God be true and let every man be a liar hallelujah please take it higher for me look at this scripture it says you shall be remembered before the Lord when you lift up your trumpet I just saw a trumpet this is what I saw in the spirit like a sound a shofar Hey, hey, hey. My Chetona, Oh, 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 I oh, 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 It says, then shall the earth yield for her increase. So the earth can yield when you stand before a barren land. It says, put me in remembrance. Then when you are done praying, oh Paul and Silas, after you pray, sing. And let the mighty one that sits upon the throne come and rent the heavens. the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it like the ark of Noah and they are saved Listen, the Bible says, though the olive may not produce, they may not be fixed on the vine, 
he said yet yet i will rejoice i will rejoice i will joy in the god of my salvation my bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so it says do weeping and joys for a night koinonia hear me joy comes with the morning listen there is one thing i know about god that no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what the lord has in store for them that love him but the bible says he has revealed them that when i praise him when i lift up a cry and say lord remember me concerning this when i'm done saying it i begin to sing and dance like a madman and sing my way to another level and dance my way to another dimension it does not make sense he said i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea hallelujah please hear me do not trivialize what you have heard do not trivialize this deep mystery your destiny helper has a book of remembrance men have books of remembrance listen there are things you have done for the kingdom some of you have served god some of you have prayed some of you have helped men some of you your parents lifted people and everybody has forgotten about you let me tell you what to do when there are men in your life who can help you and they forget about you don't go knocking their offices you are you are doing it the wrong way go to the god of all flesh the father of spirits raise a cry before him unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come lord i bring before you this petition i am a member of welfare department i am a member of prayer band i'm a member of worship team let god be true he says to lift up that incense and then begin to sing can you open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues pray in the spirit Koinonia, pray. Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please look at me. Esther chapter 6, verse 1. Please, media, help us quickly. Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. And on that night could not the king sleep. The same way. Nebuchadnezzar or Zedarius could not sleep because the three Hebrew boys, Daniel, was in the lion's den. Listen, I'd like you to pray in tongues for the next one minute. And listen, this should be your focus when you pray. Father, wake everyone sleeping who should be awake to remember me. Lift your voice and pray in the spirit. On that night, then could not Shabbat 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number one, the king had to wake up. Number two, he commanded to bring the book of remembrance. You are about to pray. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I stand by the blood. And in the name of Jesus. And I declare tonight. Let the book of remembrance in heaven and on earth concerning me, concerning my reward, let it be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Please look up. Look up. Listen. The first time the Spirit of the Lord opened the book of Esther for me. The book of Esther as a book containing a mystery of favor was opened to me. It was a February of that year. The end month I prayed favor I prayed favor into my life I believed it with all my heart because I found it there that books can be open hallelujah now listen but favor is real please hear me don't sit down waste your time and hate God for nothing favor is very very real hallelujah all blessings come from God through men to you from God through men to you when the book is opened in heaven the spirit opens the book and the bride also opens the book on earth it is the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come listen it is not difficult when the book is opened Ahasuerus said what should be done to a man who the king chooses to honor is a choice it's a choice god can choose to honor you jacob have i loved esau have i hated there is nothing that can be done when god's jealousy has been invested upon you listen to me believers in christ we are people who are beloved do you know what it means to be loved 
that means God has made himself vulnerable to you beloved I have loved thee with an everlasting love he said and I have drawn you with my loving kindness but that the book of remembrance be opened I have seen these books opened even for me I've sat down quietly and suddenly God brings to my mind the names of people not word of knowledge not word of knowledge God does not just tell me their names God connects something they had done to my life and I suddenly become indebted to them I just remember A woman had done something for me years ago very trivial thing I think it was towards the end of last year it just became a burden in my heart for no reason clear the school fees of the children help them with whatever you can do it was a burden the woman never she was not even in contact with me I didn't even have her details and I had to look for someone I said please can you help me access so 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 and so say yes I said please let me have her details and suddenly I looked at it and I said okay no problem madam can I help you this is what the Lord is putting in my heart the woman said this is an answered prayer I've been crying I'm a widow I'm a widow see let me tell you don't go around harassing people to help you that's not the way it works everything works in the realm of the spirit stay and pray and declare and declare and sing and declare that the heavens open up its book that the seven seals be broken that it be opened weep not for the book is opened when the book is opened that remembrance suddenly someone will call you and say ah, I forgot you remember what happened to the butler I remember my wrong this day have you not blessed people in your life did you not win souls in your life have you not served the purposes of the kingdom hear me believers don't be ashamed of your service it is a memorial that can rise before God Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and Hezekiah cried and said remember oh God do not forget bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits Lord you have said if I obey and I serve you I will spend my years in prosperity my days in joy you have said it and I serve you with all my heart let the blessings that follow service follow me it's a petition you are placing a demand like Mordecai the Bible does not record it but I believe that whilst Mordecai sat at the gate he continued to speak and call upon the God of the Hebrews avenge me my adversary her man is in the palace causing mayhem to me and to the people of the Lord arise in your mercy listen there are things that can happen between you and God on account of your service that when the enemy raises an assault against your family against your life you can stand up with a counter petition lord remember remember when god is jealous towards you it has happened it has happened i'm telling you what i do myself and i'm sharing with you these secrets koinonia let me tell you this is october but if you believe the things i'm saying and the books are open you will be surprised at the unending you will come and testify here that someone who forgot you remembered you and said sorry is your father still alive is your ah. when joseph met with um benjamin and all the other brothers he asked them a question he said is your father still alive is everything well with you is this well with you fetch them and bring them to egypt they brought them they settled at goshen and they were prosperous until joseph died and joseph said when you go out of egypt carry my bones carry this principle carry this pattern with you don't lose it this is the structure it's an ordinance carry it together hallelujah there are things that God has done for others for the sake of others. 
there are things that God does for the saints for the sake of Jesus there are things that can happen to Mephibosheth because he's connected to the house of Saul please hear me believers we're rounding up I truly want your life to experience the reality of God's grace I want you to touch these mysteries to experience them in a way and a manner that makes you exceptionally fruitful remember the Lord told us at the beginning of this year that I will make you exceeding fruitful he said it he said it and I believed him it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and now I show you the mystery of remembrance that a book can be opened you can call upon the God of heaven and say Lord remember 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 my father was a missionary you can tell god he's gone to be with the lord but remember he served you even at the point of death lord this is not how you reward them that serve you suddenly the book is open and god says let me come and invest my favor upon this family for the sake of the sacrifice it is not always about what you have done personally you can take advantage of every good thing. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. You can take advantage of every good thing. Lord, I'm in the worship team. Come. I sing. I sing. I stand before your people and I sing. Lord, when apostle is preaching, I'm also standing. Sometimes I am tired, but I'm standing. Remember, oh God, your service. And the heavens open towards you. And God comes to you. Son, what should I do? And you say, oh God, bless me. Give me wisdom, give me favor. And he opens up your heavens. Do not waste your yesterday many of you made good use of it use it as a memorial let it rise to heaven speak to him concerning every matter don't forget what i taught you don't forget the scripture that i taught you that you stand before god and say remember concerning this issue remember you can confront him concerning any issue bring your strong reason lord let the plague of death end in this family why should the plague of death end lord even if everybody served idols i stand as a bridge i stand as a priest i have called upon the name of the lord and adam knew his wife again and she bore seth and men began to call upon the name of the lord i stand as a bridge in my family hallelujah let me give you one prayer point last prayer point and then we are done i'd like you to pray and say lord every good thing that should come into my life as declared by your word as declared by scripture i declare that on account of this remembrance i receive it by faith let it come huh? please lift your voice and pray i receive it by faith every good thing I can see that every good thing, every good thing, Paracataposa, Epa Salacotari, Shetteropa, Epatana, Rakapata, he that did not share his side, but all the family, Shoparos, Shoparos, all the Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
I decree and I declare over your life in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I stand by the privilege of God's grace and I call upon our Father who is the God in heaven concerning you, concerning your family, concerning the issue of request. I agree with you. Let the book of remembrance be opened now. Let the book of remembrance be opened now. Let the book of remembrance that archives your faithfulness. Let the book of remembrance that archives your sacrifice. Let the book of remembrance that archives your consistency. Let the book of remembrance that records your diligence, your unbendedness, the service you have served in the house of God. I stand before the God of all heavens and I declare, let it be opened now. The Bible lets us know that the days that we are living in, the days can be evil. And it tells us a secret. It says as believers, that we need to learn the principle of redeeming the time because the days are evil i'm going to be sharing on redeeming the time very briefly and then we'll pray listen there are many words that were interpreted time in scripture but there are two of them that are of note tonight one is called chronos and the other is called kairos hallelujah chronos means the passage of time that's where we get the word chronicles from chronos all right so it means the passage time your time that moves every day and then there's another one called kairos and kairos means the set time the opportune time the time of opportunity now the difference between chronos and kairos is that kairos happens only once in a while hallelujah and Kairos is such a prophetic time in any man's life such that when you maximize the Kairos moment you can be victorious for a lifetime and if you miss out on your Kairos moment you may lose out for a very long time and so here Paul is speaking a mystery to the Ephesian church in light of the fact that they understand the progression of Kairos and Kronos he says redeem the time the word used there is the word kairos or chronos sorry the regular time redeems he said because the days are evil look up please i always like giving this example when a student is in secondary school for instance jazz one jazz two jazz three is called chronos because whether he fails an assessment it really doesn't matter but when he gets to JS3, the time of JSCE, for instance, that's a Kairos moment. Are you following me now? Because whatever he makes out of that exam will determine whether he will move to the next phase of his life. Are you following me now? When he utilizes that Kairos moment, then he keeps going, Kronos, and then he gets to a point where he's about to write SSC. And not that Kairos moment comes that can determine whether or not he will move to the next phase of his life are you following me now now the way god designed his system is such that satan does not have knowledge of kairos moments god designed it in such a way that satan has not been equipped with the knowledge to know when your prophetic time will come hallelujah that's what makes satan fearful about your life and so the only way he frustrates that opportune time is to make you waste your chronos because he understands that is the investment that you make in your everyday chronos that will account for the quality of delivery that will come when that prophetic time comes are you listening to me i'm trying to explain to you what paul is speaking to the church here he told them redeem your chronos in other words it may not look like he's counting now but there is a kairos time coming and it will come at a time that you may not even know but your investment in your chronos will prepare you for that prophetic time of your life see satan does not know the day and the hour 
when certain prophetic blueprints about your life will be open and so what happens he attempts to frustrate your chronos so that when the kairos moment comes you are not equipped to take out of it and so paul is speaking to the efficient church and is telling them redeem your chronos because when the kairos moment comes is your degree of preparation the bible says for one year esther was utilizing her chronos because there was a kairos moment coming you follow me now that kairos moment was one night she would have the opportunity to make a mark of a lifetime and the bible is every day for one year she kept preparing anointing herself with all kinds of aloes and anointing oils and the bible said when that kairos moment came she passed the king just once and the king chose her and it was through her god brought liberty and emancipation to israel there are so many believers today that miss out on their prophetic timing because they are careless over their chronos hallelujah I want to explain to you why we spend time praying and we spend time drilling ourselves in the world because for every one of us it's like a shooting star it doesn't happen all the time but one day it will just happen and satan does not have knowledge of it and so it frustrates him because every time he sees you investing in your chronos he knows that you understand the principle are you seeing that so satan makes us lazy towards prayer lazy towards investing in the world and then when your kairos moment comes because you have not been sensitive to pick the signals of the spirit you are not able to adjust to the shift that comes into your life great men have been made today because they were equipped to understand the bible says the children of Issachar they had an understanding of their kairos moment and they knew what to do hallelujah and so when we take time to pray and invest in the spirit we are making quality investments preparing for our kairos david was preparing for his kairos with blyatt and every day he kept building the wilderness he wasn't loitering around making noise his brothers were there feeling like big boys but he was there preparing for the kairos moment the opportune time you will not even know the bible says Saul was busy being diligent to his father little did he know that that diligence was a preparation for the anointing chronos because when the kairos moment comes we cannot take advantage of it that's why for many of you when your friends are going and you want to go god will draw you back i say sit down you say god but it's not fair god says i love you too much to allow your chronos your kairos time waste there are many of you that you wanted to go home god said stay back and you're like god leave me now and god said it's an investment because the kairos time is coming and hear me it will not announce itself to you it's your degree of preparation he just carried food to go and give his brothers and he had a giant roaring but he had invested in his chronos and when he looked he was not afraid because he had done his assignment he killed a bear in his chronos he killed a lion in his chronos and when he looked at goliath he said who is this uncircumcised philistine the audacity that comes when you invest in your chronos there are many of you god is building you and the day god will announce you is one day as you're moving a madman will just meander your way on that day the investment on your chronos will speak You may not look like it now but hear me there is a training there is a building and paul tells the efficient church he says redeem the time don't waste your time salvage it invest in it when others are wasting their time realize you are not going to the same place there is destiny inside of you and for that reason constrain yourself yes i know it's painful but it's the sacrifice that makes you a champion every minister of god you see sitting here and for the, the ministers around any noticeable grace of god you see upon their life came as a result of quality investment in the time of their corners and god orchestrated events to announce them one day all this ministry thing that
that people want to announce themselves that's nonsense i keep saying it the greatest publicity of a believer is to remain in your secret place building yourself for that kairos moment hallelujah when you spend time in prayer you spend time building yourself with the word you will equip yourself to a point that you'll be so full of the holy ghost the bible talks about stephen he was one of the seven deacons that were chosen to address the issue of food but he was building himself and a time came from serving food he became such a miracle worker the first matthiah I will not deceive you friends if you want to make a mark in the sands of time then let when when pain is a burden to you then you are not ready to emerge a champion away with all these soft nice things just make you feel cool under an AC wonderful but let me tell you not for generals when you are ready to emerge everybody knows that the birth of anything valuable is painful Anything that will be of value. That's why when we come, we take quality time investing in the spirit. Hallelujah. Let me show you something in the book of Galatians. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 8. to read be not deceived God is not God but whoever a man sows that shall hear him stop does that scripture make you fear that God is saying don't let anybody deceive you don't ever expect to read anything you have not sown we are not talking about money are you listening to me many we want power we want grace did you sow it of sowing into your life the bible says do not be deceived why God cannot be mocked whatsoever in other words if Aaron becomes a champion today we cannot say it's by mistake we know what happened any success that does not have a process is a mirage any success that does not have a process People ask you, I don't know what I did. In the harvest of the times of Hallelujah. Do not be deceived. Whatsoever who? Did he say a believer? Whatsoever a man sows, that will he reap. Let's read the next verse. It says, For, in other words, in continuation to that previous verse for he that soweth to his flesh will lost the flesh reap what let me show you how to sow to the flesh look up when you spend eight o'clock in the morning till 10 p.m watching nigerian food you may not like me this night oh but i love you too much i will force destiny and greatness out of you when you spend time just loitering around left right and center are not staying in God's word when you spend time just doing anything you know what you are doing you are sowing to the flesh hear me you will of the flesh reap corruptible things but the Bible says he that soweth um, how does he say it he said but he that soweth to the spirit how do you sow in the spirit in the place of prayer you are making spiritual investments because they are not investments that are tangible they are not investments in the bank where you can go and say give me back my money they are spiritual investments and they are the most powerful kinds of investments so as you spend time in the secret saying lord how amiable are your laws they are my meditation all day long the bible said the secret of the lord belongs to them that fear him not to believers to them that fear him there is a kind of reverence you give God that will cause you to commit certain secrets. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life eternal. It's not talking about the eternal life you received when you were born again. Will receive all the spiritual blessings that come as a byproduct of quality investments. Hallelujah. We need to start paying attention to our spiritual investments. I've said it and I'll say it again. You mustn't, you can ask my brothers, they'll bear witness. When you come to our house, hmm, the only thing you'll find is worship songs and sermons. Now, I don't have any problem against movie. I don't have any problem against anything. No, no, no. What I'm saying is the price we have chosen to pay for the kind of destiny we expect. Don't see me blessed tomorrow and say God loves some people. It's not true. I'm showing you the secret of a life of undeniable impact. Irrespective of your age, irrespective of your gender, if you sow to the spirit, if you sow to the spirit, you sow to the spirit, your profiting will appear unto all. He told his son Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, I think verse 15. He says, Meditate on these things, give yourself only to them, your profiting will appear unto all. The trouble is, many of us like feeling comfortable. We like feeling comfortable. Don't disturb me. Don't bug me to pray. Don't bug me to study the word. Please, I'm not like that. May I just study the word for five minutes, pray in tongues for five minutes. Let's see the kind of harvest that comes. The Bible says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Don't just take it to money alone. He that soweth in prayer sparingly shall reap results sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Hallelujah. And I want us to get results. The message tonight is that we must spend time sowing in the spirit. People will laugh at you. They will call you, what do they call you ladies? Mother Mary, SU. Let me tell you something. Those who are laughing at you today will laugh with you tomorrow. Hallelujah. If you are ashamed of it, how many of you have seen a pregnant woman ashamed? When a lady is pregnant, sometimes it so shapes her face. But who cares? Didn't you see her before she got pregnant? But it's because she's carrying something. And so sometimes she may have to bend in certain postures that are uncomfortable. But she knows that it's a prize. And you can stand and be gisting about it. But she's carrying something. The day she gives birth, you come and greet her. And the issue is you will not come empty handed. The same you who was laughing. And when she gives birth to twins or triplets. Are you getting my message tonight? There are many of us when we say pray. You're just trying to check if your wivon has shifted. <laughs> Let me tell you, if that's how your understanding of the investment for destiny is, then you are still playing. Hallelujah. Or you are checking your clothes and say, ah, this material. We must wake up and get serious with our lives. It says, he that so wet to the flesh will of the flesh with corruption. We're going to take some time and pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Tonight is a prayer meeting. We are sowing to the spirit you may say what are we saying we are making spiritual investments the Holy Ghost is going to be praying certain things please everybody stand and tonight you are not praying in your heart your ears must hear what your mouth is saying we are going to pray hallelujah go ahead if your chair is discomforting you walk around because we are not going to stop in the next 10 minutes so you better get set go ahead and let's pray come on Pray in the spirit. Walk around, walk around. Spiritual investments. 
de boca plante que te dale de boca so que de vos maca plante capacitaria make sure you are praying friends is an investment it will speak for you saca tabana de boca plante de boca so que de boca so manta plante que de vos de cata para te que te dale de vos maca plante que te vos me compra ti que paliata aprobosa de que de boca so me compra que de boca so que de boca so macaria tabana de boca plante que de vos de capra da sorte rosa ele que te vos maca prosa me te basta de capari Tariante le cosma, me he pegado de bolsa, 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 Don't be carried away by the instrumentalists. Don't be carried away by the cameras. You are in serious business tonight. In a serious business tonight. You are making yourself relevant. I assure you. Ideas will come as you pray. Impartations will come as you pray. Freedom, emancipation, victories in the spirit. showing you relevant scriptures are you listening to me concerning every major areas of our lives hallelujah and then when we pray these scriptures we'll pray in the spirit we need to have victories in our lives enough of just receive receive no we are going to do it in the world this is the kind of training that lasts hallelujah look at me i want to start with the guys concerning your life your well-being your marriage your wife should i show you one scripture never forget it psalms 128 all the gentlemen turn to that scripture we are going to pray we're in a prayer meeting tonight if you're tired you can go but we're in a serious prayer meeting tonight psalms 128 instrumentalists don't stop your ministry tonight is very very important Psalm 128. Are you there? Now all the gentlemen, let's read it. One to read. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Verse 3. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by thy sides. 
of thy house thy children like olive plants round about the table stop from verse 4 verse 4 behold that thus shall the man be blessed who feareth the Lord look at me when you find a scripture like this and draw the life out of it for every man here you can see from this scripture that it says you will reap the labor of your hands it says your wife shall be that means you will get married hello that solves that problem of beating around the bush it says walk circumspectly accurately by the word of God he said your children that means you will not know barrenness no it's the truth that's what the word of God says he says when you see this thing that's the portrait of a man who God has blessed ladies are you ready go to Isaiah 34 and let me show you something many of you who think you get married because you are fine you better change your mind and get a relevant scripture for your destiny Isaiah Capria Capo Shataliam Bretista Ibram Po Shabra Catalana Kosabai Isaiah 34 Are you there, ladies? Verse 16. Let's read one to go. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. None of these shall fall, shall fail, none shall lack her mate, for my mouth has spoken it my spirit has gathered it are you seeing there so for every lady the bible says when you seek out of the book and read part of the promise there is that none shall want her mate that permanently solves the issue of marital insecurity hallelujah are you ready to pray now so all of us are, i don't know why we're starting with that dimension we're going to pray in the spirit guys ladies we're praying in light of this scripture lift up your voice and begin to pray Come on, pray. Tell yourself, I have a blessed home. I have a blessed life. So I'm sowing today. No fight between husband and wife. No quarreling. But we have to sow. We are sowing the seed today. Make sure you pray. Don't let the devil make you feel it doesn't matter. It matters to everyone here. Kara teke bala de bakasya, ambre ke paria tabalaba, reke tele boko sobe ke debosa, le kara tabatasha, ambra tabariata, eke reto sobe ke debosa, malipra tasikaya, ambre ke debaloso, roko tobe ke dey, ekresa, nankalia tabata, ekoto sobe ke debosa. Come on, pray, pray, pray. As some of you are praying, you terminate every cost that is upon you from your family it doesn't matter where it's coming from when you stand in light of the world satan is helpless jesus died to bring the reality of redemption and because of his death his burial and resurrection by the shed blood of his son we are victorious and the word of god is alive and keep in our spirits Ma baria tapa kariedes, le kere de bosa, man preke pa kashata, e kratoso pregede. My home is blessed, my life is blessed, le kere bosa. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Listen, for many of us who have found ourselves searching and saying lord i need divine direction in my life isaiah 30. isaiah chapter 30. take note of these scriptures they are powerful scriptures coming from the spirit we are sowing in the spirit i give you a guarantee we will of the spirit reap soteria health life blessings increase Isaiah 30. Verse 21. We are reading it together, all of us. Verse 21. Want to read. 
and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, stop. God gives you an assurance. He says your ears will hear. Your ears shall hear a voice saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. Turn right, turn left. The Bible says, walk accurately, circumspectly. He's made provision. No more confusion in your life. Lift up your voice and pray. I hear the voice. I hear the voice in my dreams, in visions, in my spirit. I hear the voice. Come on, pray. Concerning your job, concerning your employment, concerning your relationship, concerning your business, concerning your family, concerning your academics, concerning your ministry, you will hear that voice. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I put it within their spirit, the capacity to hear my voice. Come on, pray. Travel in the spirit. I hear a voice in my business. I hear a voice in my ministry. I hear a voice bringing ideas. I hear a voice bringing inspiration. I hear a voice bringing direction. The voice of the Spirit. The voice of the Spirit. My spirit is able to recognize His voice. E che la faccia taria la bossa, ma caprata liba la tosa, e gratia la bossa, rate paria talimos, re paria tasca. Make sure you are praying, make sure you are praying. You will rest after the prayers, but not during the prayers. Le carata variante goes, a carapata sata, ma presso prendicata. Hallelujah. 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 A scripture concerning your health. Huh. Romans. Romans chapter 8. Was sowing in the spirit. The days that are coming will require us to live in divine health. There's a lot to do for the kingdom. Are you there? Romans 8. There is an activity of the Holy Ghost that happens in your mortal body and it has the capacity to keep you in health. Listen, every word you hear tonight will be tried one day and you will be alone to defend it. When you are a student, when you are about to graduate, there's something called defense. When you prove to them that you know what you were doing in your project, in life, there is defense to move to the next level. Satan came one day to tempt Jesus and Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Concerning your health, hear me. Especially for those of us who, are, who sense the call of God upon our lives to be in active ministry, you need this revelation. Otherwise, you collapse one day on stage. When you stand and minister for hours and you don't have the time to rest, if this is not a revelation, you minister in the rain, in the cold, in the heat, you travel to places, you are exposed to all kinds of pests, you've got to have this scripture. The Bible says, Peter, at a time, a viper just beat his hand. And the Bible, I mean, Paul, sorry. He said he just shook it and ah, dimensions in the spirit. He understood that there was an activity of the Holy Ghost in his body. Listen, I hope that these realities are, are agreeing with your spirit. Because if you are still arguing and say ah, this thing, self, listen, don't be discouraged. Even if you are running to the hospital every day, no one condemns you. You are a student on training. 
one day you will conquer so don't feel discouraged no there's no reason to be discouraged that's why we are here Jesus said come and I will make you hallelujah Romans chapter 8 Verse 11. Verse 11. Are you ready? Want to read? But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also give life. Give life. Give energy. Hear me. Listen. Let me explain that scripture before we pray. Here was the dead body of Jesus. I need you to understand that it was the Holy Ghost who made Jesus a seed. He actually turned the world into a seed. He is that powerful. He turned the second person of the Trinity, made him a seed and put him in the womb of a woman. Now here was Jesus lying dead. And on the third day, the Bible says that same spirit came and entered into that body and caused him to come alive. Hear me. I hope you know that Jesus resurrected without blood because his blood had been drained what magnificent ability of the spirit because when he resurrected there were still holes all over his body but he was still alive now the bible says in that same spirit dwells not in your spirit in your body listen listen i hope that as you are jumping you are catching this in your spirit that same spirit will revitalize there is a quickening there is an ability in your spirit if it's cancer it can die if it's your genotype it can change it believe it believe it if it were not possible god will not write it in the world lift up your voice and pray in the spirit for my health i make a spiritual investment over our minds there are many people that have been lied to by the devil that your capacity to think and be intelligent is is faulty 
tonight we are calling satan a liar are you hearing me but it's not just to say satan you're a liar jesus said no no it will not bring you the results job chapter 32 verse 8 job 32 verse 8 Job 32 verse 8. If you're there, let's read it. One to read. It says there is a spirit in man. And so men don't just understand. It's the inspiration of the Almighty that maketh men of understanding. Hallelujah. You're going to pray and say from tonight, I, I enter a realm of intellectual intelligence capacity to understand are you following me now go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit your mind can bring ideas supernatural ideas from the holy ghost Supernatural ideas. Come on, pray. Pray over your mind. My mind is blessed. I reason in the capacity of the spirit. Supernatural ability to birth ideas. Ideas that will change my family. Ideas that will change my life. Business ideas. Ministry ideas. Technological ideas. It's within your reach. The inspiration of the Almighty. There are some of you who are receiving ideas by the Spirit. Enlarged capacity. By the Spirit tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Look at me. A lot of people are running helter skelter. Recession, recession. Ah, recession, my finances. No, sir. A believer does not behave like that. Turn with me to the book of Job. Let me show you an interesting scripture. Job chapter 5. Let the fear of recession, even if they bomb the whole world, your audacity is in the integrity of the word of God. Let me tell you, businesses are failing, stocks are crashing, things are happening all over. But for the believer, there is provision that gives us security. People are dying of high blood pressure every day because they do not build their lives. They build their lives around money, not around the word of God. Are you ready? Respect these scriptures that the Lord is showing you. Job chapter 5, verse 19. Listen. Job chapter 5, verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch you. Number one, in famine, he shall redeem thee from death. In war, from the power of the sword. So why are you afraid of tomorrow's election? You must learn to build your life on the integrity of God's word. One time, I think in 2007 or so, I was coming back from Port Harcourt and we were in a luxurious bus. And while I was coming back, there were robbers. I don't know where, but they were. I mean, and I was sitting C2 in the luxurious bus. So if they were going to shoot, it's me, they'll meet first before, because the drivers you know how luxurious buses are and they put this barricade that they this metallic thing that when your tire matches so that you have to stop and everybody was shouting the name of whatever he believes in the car and i was asleep but then when i woke up there was absolute peace a scripture just came in my spirit he shall keep them in perfect peace whose minds are still hallelujah and guess what happened? True life story. Did I share this story with you? I think he knows the story. And if Jamfa were around, he would bear me witness. 
our car matched those metallic things those robbers could not shoot they couldn't do anything that's how they were watching till we passed see you are a supernatural being realize it the problem is we are always watching paloma and so our minds are bent like carnally minded we must be alive to the spirit hallelujah number two uh, verse 21 thou shalt be hidden from the scourge of the tongue so how many of you they spoke against me from the village can you see there the bible says i will deliver you from this thing no devil can speak against me from where see but hear me sorry just one minute until those scriptures become a reality what they are saying will follow you that's why there are a lot of believers who have not taken out time to eat the word and they're just saying ah, i'm safe but it's obvious that your life is showing that those things are still following you are you hearing me so before you say i'm free make sure the word is in your spirit a lot of people say ah me god forbid i will do this people die now but you see yourself stay with the word when you are full of the word then it gives you the audacity to declare exousia you can speak as touching the authority of christ but until you've stayed in the if you've not stayed in the secret place don't be shouting up and down he said i will deliver you verse 21 from the scourge of the tongue so all of those things people talk about my father's side my mother's side and you know hear me friends let's be let's be spiritually alive because we live in a generation where people don't want to pay the price and find out what the word of God has said. We like running to every prophet here and there. And he says, okay, uh, this and that. Let me go to my prayer room. You see a man doing divination and you're still comfortably crossing your legs there. And he comes out and gives you one word of knowledge. Hey, it's true, Baba, it's true. Everything happened that way. And, you know, you do all this nonsense. And they tell you, okay, go and bring 100,000. Buy this, buy that, buy this. And believers foolishly go and do those things. Then when it backfires, they come to the ministers and they don't tell all the stories. They just say the one that makes them innocent. There is a more sure word of prophecy, greater than any prophet's word, the word of God. Are you getting blessed? So stop loitering around left, right, and what will happen to my life? Will I die or will I not die? The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say it, God of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end let's hurry up the bible says thou shalt be hidden from the scourge of the tongue neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh he said at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh that's the word of god and right now there's destruction and famine that means you ought to be laughing See, the word of God intoxicates. It gives you an audacity. When men don't understand, they think you are arrogant. You are not arrogant. You are just covered. Hallelujah. Do you believe the word of God? You believe the things we are doing here let me tell you when you build your life around the word of god and you sow the seed of prayer you sow the seed of the word you will imagine you will be fearful people just look at you an ordinary man just moving around but you are not as ordinary as they look they see supernatural things happening to your life and men say how come this is happening there's no magic about it he that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh
blessed him. So he said, in response to your giving, Sorry. Sorry about that. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 12. He said, Lest thou, when thou hast eaten and art full of houses, and built goodly houses and dwell therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold are multiplied, and all that thou hast said, then thou, then thy heart shall be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord who brought you out from the land of Egypt, who led you that, 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 and then verse 17. And thou shalt say in thy heart. So that's the first thing to avoid. A lot of people get blessed and they say in their heart, my intellect, my power, my ability to do business. Really? He said, and thou shalt say in thy heart that my power and my might has brought me this good. When you have avoided that arrogance by recognizing that Lord without you, I am nothing. He said, then thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that gives you the anointing, the ability, the capacity to produce wealth. The ability to produce wealth is not money falling from heaven. If you wake up and see money supernaturally appear in your wallet, it's just a sign. It will not continue like that every day. That ability, concepts, ideas, insights. Many of us want money. No, money will not come. Money is a response. When you obey certain principles that God has put. Hallelujah. So thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he had given thee power. So you, you don't get the power from Babala or anybody. The Lord gives you the power to get wealth. Isaiah, quickly. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah 45 verse 2 and 3. I call them my golden scriptures for finances unbeatable irrefutable principles golden scriptures three legs of a chair you can sit down for a hundred years on this scripture and your finances will not shake one bit i give you a guarantee mm. verse two i will go before thee and make the crooked places straight so it's not your responsibility to make it many people have been trying to straighten their path and they are dying by them god said i will do it he says i will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut in sunder the bars of iron three let's read together one to read and i will give you stop did he say you will get i will give you it's a gift we don't realize he said i will give you i will give you the treasures of darkness read on and the hidden riches of secret places there are hidden riches it takes the spirit of god to show you you will look like this and not see anything lot looked at the land and he saw a land near sodom and when he carried it there was no more land god told abraham now look and abraham saw land where was it before that 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 is that his brother didn't see I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secrets. I will show you what button to press. I will direct you and show you things that will make you a fearful wonder. All these struggle believers do is because we do not know how to sit with the word of God and understand his principles. The last scripture, Isaiah 48. Mm. These scriptures are so dear to my life. Isaiah 48 I have to hurry up Isaiah 48 verse 17 are you there verse 17 read on everybody want to read I am the Lord 
God that teaches thee. How many of you have gone tutorials? Have you gone for tutorials? You know how they teach you. God says, I am the one who can teach you. Those of you in business, don't kill yourself. I am the Lord that teaches thee to profit. If you are not taught, you will never know. You will struggle for nothing and die crying. I am the Lord that teacheth thee. I understand the art of making profit. I will teach you. That's what the Lord says. Three powerful scriptures. There are many others, but sufficient are these three. Now go ahead and pray and say, Lord, you have said you will give me the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Many of you will receive them as ideas, supernatural ideas. You must believe it. And if you do, go ahead and begin to pray. Pray in the spirit. Say, Lord, I was born in a family that has been challenged financially. Now is the time. There must be evidence that I have been with you. It must show in my finances and that of my family there must be evidence that I have participated with you in communion hallelujah go ahead and pray Lord let there be a supernatural release of ideas concepts insights teach your people how to profit direct them by the spirit of the Lord only you are able to do this. We can try. We can try and try. Hallelujah. See. Are you seeing why it's important to build your life around the world? Because you can fail as a person. But the word of God that backs you cannot fail. So to the spirit. Let me tell you. These principles of God have no respect for gender. No respect for age. I tell you the truth. At any level. When you believe them and begin to live by them. Your profiting will appear unto all. It may take a while in the time of building. But it won't be too long. Your diligence will speak. It's the truth. It's the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. grace so that I will come I will make this a habit to invest in the spirit listen 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 get your phones fill them with scriptures fill them with messages by the grace of God some of these messages are free that's why we make them free the aim is not profit the aim is for life to be changed get these things can take a day just buy fruits make fruit salad that you take so that it doesn't just fill your stomach and make you sleep and be snoring but just enough so hunger doesn't keep ringing on your head and sit with the word and say lord i am ready to take responsibility a lot of believers are still blaming the government blaming everybody they are chopping our money blaming everybody our parents are doing this they are doing this and that when you are ready to change your life will change many people are waiting for god god is waiting for us the anointing is for your rich the blessings of the lord is for your rich but you must take responsibility the issue is not just a job you need the word that's what will give you victory my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my say do not let them depart from your 
lies keep them in the midst of your heart says they are life to those who find them health to their flesh hallelujah go ahead and pray grace lord grace grace upon me to pray until something changes about my life grace to study the word the destiny of a generation is upon my shoulders Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotos Koto Prekateka Nekata The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline